Colgate Tooth Powder's Theater of Romance presents Stage Door. Yes, tonight and every Tuesday night, Colgate Tooth Powder brings you the Theater of Romance, featuring each week your favorite stories and plays, especially adapted for radio. And here is your host for the evening, Arnold Moss, to tell you about this evening's presentation, Stage Door. Good evening, and welcome to Colgate Tooth Powder's Theater of Romance. Romance isn't always a girl and a boy holding hands in the moonlight. Cinderella and the Prince, Romeo and Juliet. Romance is sometimes the story of a girl who wants to be those people. Romance to such a girl is grease paint and applause and a spotlight. Stage Door is the story of a boarding house full of girls like that, and we're going to tell you what happened to three of them. Terry Randall, Jean Maitland, and Kay Hamilton, who share a room in Mrs. Orchid's theatrical boarding house. The girls are in their room now at the close of a long, weary day spent pounding the pavements. Any luck today, Terry? No, Kay. I think I banged on 20 producers' doors. But opportunity was always out to lunch. This searching for a part gets a little frightening sometimes, doesn't it? I've been to every office in town this week, and it's always the same answer. No casting or you're not the type. I've been getting that for a year now. You're thinking all that time I'd be the type for something, wouldn't you? Yeah, me too. Why do we put up with it? We put up with it because there's something inside of us that won't let us quit. Some belief, some fire, if you like the word better. If I had the chance I'd show you acting, you wouldn't forget in a long time. If I had the chance, I'd be thunder and lightning and and tenderness and beauty. I don't care so much whether I'm thunder and lightning. I just want some money. I want a mink coat and a swimming pool and a Cadillac and a Dalmatian. Oh, Oh, shame on you. (gasps) What would you be in the theater if you had the chance, Kay? I'd be anything. I'd take any part, no matter how small. It's the thing I've wanted all my life. It means more to me than anything in the world, even my own life. You're discouraged, Terry, because you've been trying for a year. I've been trying for five. But one day I'll step out upon a stage and it'll be my hour. And people will laugh and cry with me, and all this struggle will seem worthwhile, too. I understand, Kay. We'll get that hour, you and I, because we'll starve and work until we do. And when our names go up in lights, our hearts will go right with them. We'll have arrived. I take it you intend to struggle on, sore feet and sore producers notwithstanding. (laughs) That's right. Oh, it doesn't seem right. There ought to be some easier way to earn a mink coat. Oh, well, let's eat. Kay, what'll you do if all this wonder doesn't come to pass? I don't know exactly what I'll do, Jean. But I think I'll want to die. Miss Maitland? Yes? My name is David Kingsley. David Kingsley? I'm dreaming this couldn't be happening, not to me. Mr. Stevens of our office made a screen test of you a few weeks ago, which we sent out to the coast. Uh-huh. Well, they liked it. They did? They'd like you to go out there as soon as possible. Oh, gee. Will you go? Well, I go. I'll go tonight. Uh, Terry, come here. I'd like to meet Mr. Kingsley of uh, Globe Pictures. This is my roommate, Miss Randall. How do you do, Miss Randall? I'm going to Hollywood, Terry. Pass my test. They want me. Oh, Jean, I'm so glad. That's wonderful. Don't you think Terry could have a test, too, Mr. Kingsley? She's an awfully good actress. Did you see Cyclone? Did you see The Elder Son? Why, uh, yes, I think I could arrange that. You'll be at my office at 9 in the morning, and I'll fix it up for you, Miss Randall. Oh, well, thanks very much. And please don't think I'm not grateful, but I... I don't really want a screen test, and there's no use taking up your time. Terry, don't be a fool. That's money coming in every week. It's clothes to wear, nice clothes. It's the end of tramping the streets and wearing your knuckles out, banging on closed doors. It's success, Terry. Just try. Take the test. Why don't you take it and then see how you feel if it turns out well? Terry, please. (laughs) Well, all right, I'll take it. But I warn you, I like pounding on doors, even though I do gripe about it. I like it because inside me, I believe that one day, one of them is going to open. I got a part. Oh, no. I got a 
cars. Oh, Terry, how wonderful. What happened? Well, I, I was up in Mr. Berger's office. Mr. Berger? Well, you know I've been standing outside his office all week when suddenly he opened the door and I said, now look here. You're a producer and I'm an actress. What right have you to barricade yourself behind closed doors and not see me? And hundreds like me. Why, why, the greatest actresses in the world might be coming up your stairs and you'd never even know it. Harry, what did he say? He said, are you the greatest actress in the world? And I said, maybe. And you've got the job. Yes. Oh. And when I walked out on Broadway again, it, it seemed the most glamorous street in all the world. Those beautiful, needic orange stands. And that lovely traffic at Broadway oh. and 45th. And those darling bums spitting on the sidewalk. Mary, dear, there's a Mr. Kingsley downstairs waiting to see you. Mr. Kingsley? Mm-hmm. Oh, all right, Mrs. Orchid, thank you. Hello there. I just stopped by on a chance. Are you busy this evening? Well, no. No, I'm not. Why? Could I interest you in dinner with a hard-working talent man? <laughs> Strictly unprofessionally, of course. I'd love it. <laughs> Funny. I never thought you were the kind of man who'd like walking in Central Park at night. <laughs> what kind of a man did you think I was? Oh, the man about town kind. You know, bright lights and smoke-filled nightclubs. Smart, sophisticated people. Would you like that kind of a man? No. But I think I'm in the minority there. Most girls would. Let's sit down on that bench there. All right. Oh, look at that 59th Street skyline. It's like a fairy tale castle rising out of the dark, isn't it? Yes, from here it is. What kind of a man do you like, Terry? Oh, I don't know exactly. But I think a man who likes simple, homely things, basically. The kind of man my father is. One who likes armchairs and good books and a pipe in the evening. Country roads and meadows and lakes and gardens. And yet likes cities, too. The kind of a man that can get a thrill out of Broadway. And, of course, he... He must be a man who'd love me very much. I think I know a man like that, Terry. Do you, David? Do you? Yes, I may tell you about him sometime. Well, it's getting late. We'd better start for home. Oh, David, I forgot. Can you imagine that? I've been with you all evening and forgot to tell you. A few hours ago, it was the most important thing in the world. David, I've got a part. I'm going to be in a play. Can you imagine forgetting that? I can imagine forgetting everything tonight. I'm sorry, kids. The show's closing. Well, you can't close. You can't. We, we've only had four performances. We haven't had a chance. Sorry, Terry. That's show business. Kay, I... I just can't believe it. It just won't sink in somehow. Four performances and then... Then nothing. Oh, it's frightening. You work and work and pray and fight and, and then you get a chance and, and overnight it blows up in your face. I know, I know. Well, there's no use crying about spilt milk, I guess. Come on, let's get out and have a time for ourselves. Terry, I can't take any more money from you. <laughs> Why not? They have to pay me two weeks' salary for this flop. Eighty dollars. We're fixed for two weeks. One of us will get a job. No, you paid my rent last month. Oh, now, don't be stuffy. I happen to be the one who was working. Maybe I'll never get a job. Maybe I'm just not a very good actress. Hey, stop that talk. You're a wonderful actress. Oh, Terry, sometimes I don't know what to do. I've got to go ahead. I can't go back. There isn't anything to go back to. It's a... Uh... Your husband, isn't it? I didn't know you knew I was married. It was just a shot in the dark. I ran away from him twice before. But I had to go back. You see, I got hungry. Both times, he just waited. He's waiting now. But this time, I won't go back. If I did, I might kill him. Because he's not human. I can't think of him as human anymore. And if... I think I was moaning about my troubles. Come on, honey, let's go out and have a hamburger. Terry, I just can't. I 
I just can't accept anymore. I have to make my own way or stop trying. You can understand that, can't you, Terry? Yes, I guess I can, Kay. But I don't like to leave you alone. I'd like to be alone. I think maybe I need to be alone tonight. All right, Kay. All right. Kay, I'd like to speak to you just a minute. Oh, uh, well, I- I'm a little busy, Mrs. Orcutt. I'm working on something. It won't take me but a moment. I just want to, um... Well, you know how reluctant I always am to speak to you on this subject. I try to be as easy as I can with the girls, but after all, I have my bills to pay, too. I know. Now, each month you're so late in paying and taking everything into consideration, I was going to suggest another theatrical club that I happen to know about where the rates are a little less than mine. I'll give you the address. You might just stop in and take a look at it. Mrs. O'Connor. Now, 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 we mustn't be upset about this. I'll just write the address down for you. It won't be necessary, Mrs. Orchid. I won't need the address. But, my dear... It won't be necessary, I tell you. I'm making other plans. Where's that confounded light switch? Kay? Honey, are you asleep? Kay! I just walked in and there she was dead. I don't understand where she got that amount of poison, Mr. Kingsley. Oh, I wish I'd never taken her in. I knew there was something strange about that girl. She was different from the rest of the girls. No, Mrs. Orchid, she wasn't. She wasn't a bit different. She was just a girl without a job like all the rest of us. It might have been anyone. Terry. Terry, stop crying. Listen to me. David, I... I can't stop crying. Terry, I don't think you should stay here any longer. They want you out in Hollywood. They thought your test was terrific. I think you ought to go out, Terry. No. No, I'm going to stay here. This is my fight, David. I... I loved Kay. She was the finest friend anyone could have. The theater did this to her. The theater beat her and starved her and finally killed her. Well, I'm going to exact payment for that somehow. I'm in this for both of us now, and I'm going to stick it out if it takes 50 years. I'm going to stick it out until my name goes up in lights and then people clap when I come on the stage. It's conquer or be conquered. And I'm going to conquer, David. I'm going to conquer. <laughs> Curtain has fallen on our first act. And now here's Del Charbot with a few words. Something exciting happens in your mouth every time you brush your teeth with Colgate tooth powder. Yes, something exciting because Colgate tooth powder stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth, stops it instantly in seven cases out of ten. Scientific tests prove this to be true. And then, too, Colgate tooth powder does a real job of cleansing. With amazing speed and effectiveness, its gentle polishing agent removes dull, dingy surface film from your teeth and reveals all their natural luster. So, don't take a chance with romance. Use Colgate tooth powder night and morning and before every date. Begin tonight, won't you? Get Colgate tooth powder. Remember that name. Colgate tooth powder. We return now to the second act of Stage Door. Terry, dear, have you seen Jean's picture yet? She's simply wonderful. Yes, Mrs. Orchid, I saw it. Well, you don't seem very enthused. I'm a little tired, Mrs. Orchid. Working in a blouse department of a store can be a little wearing, you know. Well, dear, it pays your bills. That blouse, madam, is the loveliest thing for three ninety five I've ever seen. Don't you think you should take it a teensy bit larger, madam? What inspiring dialogue. Well, you could have gone to Hollywood. Look at Jean. They say Jean's going to be starred in her second picture. Think of that. How can I forget it? (laughs) 
Perry, look at this picture of Jean on the front page. You see, lovely Jean Maitland, popular screen star, alights at Newark Airport. Mm, that's a nice picture. Oh, and see here, it says she's coming back to New York to do a play. Oh, isn't that exciting? She's going to star on Broadway. Yes, that's swell. It's a wonderful break. Well, I have to get to bed. 7.30 comes pretty early in the morning. <laughs> I'd like to see Mr. Hoffman, please. Sorry, Mr. Hoffman isn't casting any plays just now. I'd like to talk to Miss Lamb about the Robertson show. Sorry, that's all, Cass. Is Mr. Frank Hogan? I'd like to read for his new show. Sorry, I... there's nothing for your type just now. If I could just see Mr. Berger. Sorry. All I'm asking is a chance. Sorry. I know I could play the part. Sorry. At least let me try the part. It isn't fair just to say no. It isn't fair. Sorry. Oh, I wish I were dead. I wish I were dead. Well, Terry. Well, Jean. It's been a long time. <laughs> Not so long. But you've really gone places, in it? This part they have for me, it's a wonderful part, Terry. It'd be a wonderful part for you. <laughs> yes. But things like that don't happen to me. Well, maybe they will now. Maybe your luck will change. If ever anyone deserved a break, it's you, Terry. Thanks, Jean. I'll keep working for it, anyhow. Look, I'm going to try and sell Mr. Gretzel and David on letting you do the part in this play they've bought for me. Jean, you're crazy. No, I'm not. It's your part. It would make you a star. And it's nothing to me. Well, anyway, it would never mean to me what it will to you. Don't do it, Jean. Play it and, and make the most of it. I'll always love you for the thought, though. Uh-huh. I'm going to see that Mr. Gretzel hears you if it's the last thing I ever do. <laughs> Terry, this is Mr. Adolph Gretzel. Miss Randall, I am a man of few words. I have here a part. Miss Maitland says she is not well enough to play it, and both she and David insist that you are the one to play it. That I want to see. You will pre please read some lines for me. Uh, uh, no? Y you mean without reading the show? What's so difficult about that? We do that all the time in pictures. Here, here, uh, read this speech here. Well, all right, here goes. Look, boys, I haven't got any right to stand up here and tell you what to do. Only maybe I have got a right, see? Because, look, I'm engaged to be married. You all know... Well, which would you rather do? Die quick fighting or starve to death slow? That's why I'm telling you to strike, strike, strike... I, I can't read it like this, Mr. Gritzel. I can't do it. I can't... I have to study. It isn't fair. Uh, you must excuse me. I'm a plain-speaking man. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but in my opinion, this young lady is not for me. Thank you for coming in and reading. I'm sorry. Uh, what are you going to do with that play, Mr. Gretzel? <laughs> Throw it away. I was only interested in it as a vehicle for Miss Maitland, anyhow. I don't really want to put it on. Will you sell it to me? For what price? For whatever you paid for it. For her? For her. You are crazy. No, you are. You'll see after your reader notices. Well, I'm going right out and have Becca draw up a contract immediately before you change your mind. Oh, David. David, darling, you can't do this just for me. Hold on a minute. I'm not one of those boys who puts on a play just so that his girl can act in it. Uh, by the way, you are my girl, aren't you? I'd like to be. <laughs> I guess it was time I got around to asking that. I thought about it a good many times, but I thought you didn't want anything on your mind but the theater. David, I... I found out something about the theater. It isn't enough all by itself. You get lonely for someone to come home to. Someone who understands darling. Oh, darling. 
Well, now, let's see. Uh, we'll have to go right on with the rehearsals, you know. I, I want this play to open a schedule, so if you'll meet me at 11 tomorrow, we'll see about the license. Uh, you have a rehearsal at 2 at the music box, of course, and, and we'll have to fit the wedding in somehow on Sunday. Does that meet with your approval, Miss Randall? Yes, indeed, Mr. Kingsley. Oh, David, I'm so happy. I, I could just die. Don't you dare. This is just the ending for a real play, isn't it? Girl meets producer, girl marries producer. Plays lead in his show. Correction, Miss Randall. That isn't the ending. That's only the beginning. Oh, David, darling. Darling. But Terry's right after all. It is the ending. And the final curtain has gone down on Stage Door by George S. Kaufman and Edna Ferber. In just a moment, Arnold Moss will tell you about next week's play. First, tonight, this very evening, you can enjoy a breath that's sweet and a smile that dazzles. Because Colgate Tooth Powder not only removes dull film quickly and safely from your teeth, revealing all their natural brilliance, but at the same time, it gives you a breath that's sweet and wholesome. And that's a fact, friends, for scientific tests have proved beyond question that Colgate tooth powder actually stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth, stops it instantly in seven cases out of ten. And it's just that easy, too. Simply brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate tooth powder. Remember that name, Colgate tooth powder. And now, Arnold Moss. Our play next week is Arthur Cobra's delightful comedy, Having Wonderful Time. The story of the city people who, imprisoned 50 weeks a year by stone and steel, go to summer camp for two weeks vacation with pay. There, invoices and dictation are forgotten. Every girl becomes a Cinderella and every boy a Prince Charming and every day is Sunday. Until next Tuesday, then, when Colgate Tooth Powder's Theater of Romance presents... Having wonderful time. This is your host, Arnold Moss, saying good night and wishing you love, happiness, and romance. In tonight's play, Terry was played by Joan Banks and David by Richard Calmer. The radio adaptation was written by Gene Holloway. The music composed and conducted by Ben Ludlow. And the production was directed by Mark Loeb. What is the 14-day palm olive plan? Yes, what is the 14-day palm olive plan? It's the biggest beauty news in years. Doctors tested this plan, proved it brought lovelier complexions to two out of three of all the women tested. Here it is. Wash your face with palm olive soap. Then massage for a full 60 seconds with palm olive's lovely soft lather. Then rinse. Do this three times a day. Easy to do, yet 36 doctors proved this palm olive plan brings a lovelier complexion to two out of three women. No matter what type of skin you have, dry or oily, the 14-day palm olive plan works. So get palm olive. See what palm olive can do for your skin in only 14 days. You can't fly a B-29 over Japan. You can't storm a fort in Italy or blast a pillbox in Normandy. And yet right in your own kitchen, you can help the lads who are fighting to end the war this year. How? By saving used kitchen fat. The kitchen fat you save and sell to Uncle Sam is desperately needed in scores of supplies, all the way from ammunition to zinc sterates, all the way from medicines to munitions, from fertilizers to foodstuffs. So save every single drop of used kitchen fat, even the burned blackened bacon grease. Your butcher pays you two precious red ration points, plus four cents for every pound you turn in. If you want to drive a nail in Adolf Hitler's coffin, save your fat and turn it in, and do it plenty often. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.